Alors, euh, where do I start? <laughs> um, after seeing some of the videos that people have put up here, um, I'd like to share kind of what the experience that personally I've gone through and my family. Um, oh, it's been a roller coaster. I'll give it that. Um, I guess the first thing is I've never, I've never really been bothered by politics. Obviously, politics is plays an important part in society, but you know I'm a <coughs> normal working, say normal. I'm a working guy. I've got family. I've got kids. I've had various careers through through my life. Um, I've always been financially stable and okay. Um, and I've always kind of given politics a bit of a an arm's length, purely because there isn't a great deal of difference you can make or could um, between what is generally two parties. So you get on with life and when January, February time was on us and there was speak of you know this global plague that was out to get us i kind of saw the media popping up here and there i don't i, I read i read mainstream media i didn't really have <clears throat> any idea what type of influence they have over um us and their political siding and where they sit to the left, to the right, to the far right, to the far left. It didn't actually, it didn't really bother me. I would watch, look at the BBC, look at ITV, you know, look at Sky. And then I started to notice a bit of bias between a couple of them. So I started to watch ITV. Anyway, then the lockdown came. And I knew it was coming. You know, we, we all knew it was coming. My, my wife knew it was coming. And, you know, I said, you know, we need to kind of prepare ourselves a little bit. Um, but what I wasn't prepared for was the psychological effect it would have on people very close to me. And I'm talking about, you know, someone that's very close to our family. Um, that ended up in, in, a, um, uh, in hospital for a psychiatric hospital uh, under section from fear and I'll give you the story we were we went to the park during lockdown and we bumped into some friends we had a few drinks it was a really hot day it was, it was one of the really hot days in May it was lovely kids had been stuck in for I don't know, six weeks or something. <clears throat> We'd been stuck in, um, literally stuck in. And actually, I, I did the right thing, or what I thought was the right thing, by, by staying in, yeah? And when we were at the park, um, you know, we had some music on and we had a few bottles of wine and we were sitting in a circle, the correct safe distancing. I won't use the word social distancing. I think it's, I think it's wrong. So we were sitting at a safe distance. The kids could not uphold that. So, you know, we'd all, we'd all been in our houses for weeks. So, you know, we let them play. But I noticed three or four sets of adults walking past us, muttering, social distancing, you know, and, and basically ousting us for sitting there, chatting, drinking, not excessively, and it made me feel like I was doing something wrong. And there was one particular couple that walked past and they stopped and they stopped and they stared at us and they were shaking their heads. And I thought, this is wrong. This is so wrong. And in the lead up to this, someone very close to us um, had become very psychologically distressed at home, locked down, 
and had just been put in hospital. And I came home that night, and bearing in mind, you know, this person very close to us had been in hospital now for about two weeks, sectioned in hospital from fear. There was nothing wrong with her, absolutely nothing wrong with her. She went about her daily business every day, you know, she gets on with, with whatever she does. And I, I watched her mental health deteriorate to the point where she was taken to hospital under section and she'd been in there for two weeks. I went home that night, we, we cycled home. It was still really hot. And um, my wife and kids had all gone to bed and I cried my eyes out uncontrollably from the succession of things that had happened. Someone was in hospital. We don't know how they're going to be. The kids, I'm starting, starting to notice an effects on the kids. I'm feeling affected. And by this time, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty liberal about stuff. Um, and actually, about two or three days before we'd got, we went out to the park, I'd got hold of the, the SAGE document. And the SAGE document is a public, publicly available document um, that was written by the, uh, the behavioural intelligence team who offered it to SAGE, who then offered that to the government. This paper's still available, and it's basically about mind control, and it's about how to put fear into the public to get them to conform and comply. And it took me a couple of days to, to take that document in and then to actually realise that we are, we are being controlled. And I lost the plot. I absolutely lost the plot. And I started from, from the next day, I was so, so angry. And then I became very anti everything. And then I calmed down a little bit. And then I started to look at all of the news channels. And then I, I started to look at um, unbiased news channels, YouTube news, channel, uh, news channels, the UK Column, Anna Breeze's channel, Vernon Coleman, um, which brought a bit of uh, humour to, to the situation. And then I started noticing that all these other people were waking up and realising what was going on. And then I started to look at myself outside of society and look at society and look what was happening. And it really concerned me. It really, really concerned me. I see the government bumbling along, not knowing what they're doing, putting measures in place that should have been done a long, long time ago. I don't agree with the lockdown. I agree with, I believe that there are specific, <clears throat> specific people, groups that should be protected. But I said all along that Sweden was doing the right thing. Um, we all know that this is no more dangerous than a flu virus. Yes, it's a nasty virus for some people. And yes, some people will die. But statistically, statistically, and if you look at the numbers, and actually, now that the death rate, which we all looked at every day, is not what it was, uh, not what it, it first was, we're looking at a death rate the same as the flu. All of these pieces of the jigsaw came together and I, I had never felt so politicised in all my life. I didn't really care for politics. I, I now care about politics. I now, I now care about society. Not that I didn't care about society. But my, my hope and my big belief at the moment is if, if, is that we can change things. But we have to talk to other people. We have to get this message across. People I know and friends of mine think I'm a conspiracy theorist. I'm not a conspiracy theorist. I'm open-minded. The 5G thing, you know, I'm not into any of that stuff. But what I, what I can see is uh, a very, very strong element of psychological, applied psychology to the general population in the UK and it is having drastic effects on everyone and if it carries on then our society will never ever be what it once was. I believe that 
this whole new normal thing is crap, right? This isn't the new normal, it's the new abnormal, yeah? We're being held back by government uh, to, 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 change, to change our behaviour, to change the way um, they want us to behave uh, and to do what they want. And obviously the politicians, they don't give a shit, you know? They, they are there, they're there for a career. They don't care about us, yeah? Politicians are selected. They're not elected, especially up at that level. Um, I did a, I did a, a political compass. You can get it online. Turns out I'm, I'm very liberal, which kind of explains the way that, that I, I feel and behave and talk and think and act. And, uh, and that's kind of, that's, that's been really enlightening for me because I've, I've found that actually that part of politics has, has been, um, has been, has been has been really important for me to kind of wake up and, and actually look what's look what's going on in the world. The biggest problem I've got at the moment is the way that the children are being treated. Um, I remember we were walking in the woods two or three weeks into lockdown, and I said to my wife, "I said these kids aren't going to see." It's literally dawned on me the kids aren't going to see their friends, and no one knows how long that's going to be for. We towed the line, we stayed in, we did what the government recommended. But guess what? Now, the mask thing. I, you know, if it had been done in January, it, it, it would have been the right thing to do, or February. But now, too little, too late, yeah? So, too little, too late. Um, and for someone like me that you know, is quite pragmatic about stuff and a critical thinker. I have an issue with wearing a mask. Now, I did wear one. I, sorry, I didn't, I didn't wear one twice, but now I, I will wear one because it will make other people feel uncomfortable. And actually, for a bit of peace and quiet and to stop being alienated in a shop, then that's a, a small price to pay. We all know, we all know the nonsense about masks. Uh, what they don't do and what they apparently do do. Um, so I guess the, the learning from, from all of this um, is that most of what we're being led down the path to do now is utter nonsense. And I think the people that watch this channel know that. But it's very difficult to to try and to try and live the way that you lived before without you know annoying other people so i guess from you know from from my perspective kind of where i am now um people like us people on this channel people on the other channels we have to unite um there's various organizations that have sprung up recently uh keep keep britain free is one of them which i've joined um our voices are getting bigger and and i i i truly believe that more and more people are waking up people that people that i know friends of mine they listen to me now um they listen to you know mainstream media and balanced views but they can see that none of this is making any sense None of it is making any sense at all. And anyone with half a brain at the moment is laughing at these rules that are, that are being put in place. So, you know, Anna Breeze, you're, you're doing a, an amazing job. Um, uh, you're spreading the word. Um, let's just talk to people about the reality of this. You know, let's not forget that there is a virus out there. You know, and and it and it is bad for some people, but it is nowhere near the black death <clears throat> that that we were once told that it would be. Um, so yeah, so just hearing everyone else's stories, and I wanted to give you give you mine. Um, it was it was the the fear thing and and the the psychological control that that bothered me the most it's still going on now it's still going to carry on there's there's going to be another 18 months of this i, I guess 
but it's down to us to change it. It's down to us to change. You, we all have a voice. If you don't, if you don't speak out, it will just continue. You know, I work in a an industry where if you don't push back and you don't debate and you don't argue and you don't put your your point across, then you'll just get tramped over. And and actually, that's that's what's happened. But there are people like us now, you know, that that can do that. So. Um, you know, on a positive note, you know, it's been pretty crap for a lot of people and, and I've been in a relatively good position. You know, I've seen a, a few people suffer, but financially, you know, there's people out there that, that are really suffering. They're not going to have jobs to go to. Um, you know, the kids going back to school, but, you know, ending on a positive note, you know, we're uprising. You know, we are uprising. You know, we are, we are walking away from the shackles of this this nonsense that we've been fed and i implore everyone you know to get out there and spread the word and and you know don't 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 be aggressive you know don't 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 dispute too much but just talk about actually the facts because the facts are out there they're just not in the media and the more that we talk to each other the more that we share experiences you know the more we can fight this this dreadful government i'm desperately trying not to swear at the moment because i do have a bit of a foul mouth sometimes but this is public um so just keep pushing keep up the fight join the facebook groups you know and just be nice to each other because ultimately you know we're <laughs> we're all in this together but we're not we're dividing now which is great um but uh, yeah keep it up and uh best wishes to all